Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Today, we're still in the book of Acts, chapter 13. Barnabas and Saul are chosen and sent. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sure hope everybody is saved. You've given your life to Christ Jesus, right? You've been baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? I hope you're reading God's word. Preferably the King James Version of the Bible. Going down on your knees in prayer and crying out to the Father. I know that um, people say, well, why you gotta, um, why we gotta go down and what? You have to. You have to be baptized. If you want to really um, present yourself to the Lord, then we got to do it the right way. You got you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, then you have to go down in water, be baptized down in the name of Jesus Christ, right? Hallelujah. It's only the right thing to do. And I hope you're reading God's word daily and going down on your knees in prayer and crying out to him in sincerity and truth. And if you don't know him and you haven't heard from him, you don't have to get to the Holy Spirit, keep on crying out to him till you hear from him. He know your heart. He'll answer you. Not only that, he'll begin to teach you the word of God. He's, he's teaching me, he's taught me, he's continually teaching me, because we know that he that has begun a good work will not stop until the day of Christ coming. So you have to be teachable for one. Yeah, hallelujah. And I hope you live living a daily life of repentance, because we live in these fleshly bodies, and the flesh is always warring with the spirit. You know, I always tell you the truth, because I love you, and Father God loves you more. We're now going to say a prayer for children of all ages. We're going to get right into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for our parents that we love, and they train us up by your word. Thank you, Father God, for giving us children, that we, our, our siblings that we love, and our parents that we love. And thank you, Father, for loving us. And thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. We love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Let us go into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13. Barnabas and Saul are chosen and sent. The church at Antioch had several prophets and teachers. They were Barnabas, Simeon, also called Niger, Lucia from Serene, Lucius from Serene, Manin, who was Herod's close friend, and Saul. While they were worshiping the while they were worshiping the Lord and going without eating, the Holy Spirit told them, Appoint Barnabas and Saul to do the work for which I have chosen them. Everyone prayed and went without eating for a while longer. Next they placed their hands on Barnabas and Saul to show that they had been appointed to do this work. Then everyone sent them on their way. Barnabas and Saul in Cyprus. After Barnabas and Saul had been sent by the Holy Spirit, they went to Seleucia. From there, they sailed to the island of Cyprus. They arrived at Salamis and began to preach God's message in the Jewish meeting places. They also had John as a helper. Barnabas and Saul went all the way to the city of Paphos on the other end of the island, where they met a Jewish man named Bar-Jesus. He practiced witchcraft and was a false prophet. He also worked for Sergius Paulus who was very smart and was the governor of the island. Sergius Paulus wanted to hear God's message, and he sent for Barnabas and Saul. But by Jesus, whose other name was Elimus, was against them. He even tried to keep the governor from having faith in the Lord. Then Saul, better known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked straight at Elimus and said, You son of the devil, you are a liar, a crook, and an enemy of everything that is right. When will you stop speaking against the true ways of the Lord? The Lord is going to punish you by making you completely blind for a while. Suddenly the man's eyes were covered by a dark mist, and he went around trying to get someone to lead him by the hand. When the governor saw what had happened, he was amazed at this teaching about the Lord. So he put his faith in the Lord. Paul and Barnabas in Antioch of Pisidia. Paul and the others left Paphos and sailed to Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and went back to Jerusalem. The rest of them went on from Perga to Antioch in Pisidia. Then on the Sabbath, they went to the Jewish meeting place and sat down. 
After the reading of the law and the prophets, the leader sent someone over to tell Paul and Barnabas, Friends, if you have anything to say that will help the people, please say it. Paul got up. He motioned with his hand and said, People of Israel and everyone else who worships God, listen. The God of Israel chose our ancestors, and he let our people prosper while they were living in Egypt. Then, with his mighty power, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he took care of them in the desert. He destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan and gave their land to our people. All this happened in about 450 years. Then God gave our people judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. But the people demanded a king. So for 40 years, God gave them King Saul, the son of Kish, from the tribe of Benjamin. Later, God removed Saul and let David rule in his place. God said about him, David, the son of Jesse, is the kind of person who pleases me most. He does everything I want him to do. God promised that someone from David's family would come to save the people of Israel, and that one is Jesus. That one is Jesus. But before Jesus came, John was telling everyone in Israel to turn back to God and, he, and be baptized. Then when John's work was almost done, he said, who do you people think I am? Do you think I am the promised one? He will come later, and I am not good enough to untie his sandals. Now listen, you descendants of Abraham, pay attention, all of you Gentiles who are here to worship God. Listen to this message about how to be saved, because it is for everyone. The people of Jerusalem and their leaders didn't realize who Jesus was, and they didn't understand the words of the prophets that they read each Sabbath. So they condemned Jesus just as the prophets had said. They did exactly what the scriptures said they would. Even though they couldn't find any reason to put Jesus to death, they still asked Pilate to have him killed. After Jesus had been put to death, he was taken down from the cross and placed in a tomb. But God raised him from death. Then for many days, Jesus appeared to his followers who had gone with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Now they are telling our people about him. God made a promise to our ancestors, and we are here to tell you the good news, that he has kept this promise to us. It is just as the second psalm says about Jesus. You are my son, because today I have become your father. God raised Jesus from death and will never let his body decay. It is just as God said. I will make to you the same holy promise that I made to David. And in another psalm it says, God will never let the body of his holy one decay. When David was alive, he obeyed God. Then after he died, he was buried in the family grave and his body decayed. But God raised Jesus from death and his body did not decay. My friends, the message is that Jesus can forgive your sins. The law of Moses could not set you free from all your sins. But everyone who has faith in Jesus is set free. Make sure that what the prophets have said doesn't happen to you. They said, look. You people who make fun of God, be amazed and disappear. I will do something today that you won't believe, even if someone tells you about it. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the meeting, the people begged them to say more about these same things on the next Sabbath. After the service, many Jews and a lot of Gentiles who worship God went with them. Paul and Barnabas begged them all to remain faithful to God, who had been so kind to them. The next Sabbath, almost everyone in town came to hear the message about the Lord. When the Jewish people saw the crowds, they were very jealous. They insulted Paul and spoke against everything he said. But Paul and Barnabas bravely said, We had to tell God's message to you before we told it to everyone else. But you rejected the message. This proves that you don't deserve eternal life. Now we are going to the Gentiles. The Lord has given us this command. I have placed you here as a light for the Gentiles. You are to take the saving power of God to people everywhere on earth. This message made the Gentiles glad, and they praised what they had heard about the Lord. Everyone who had been chosen for eternal life then put their faith in the Lord. The message about the Lord spread all over that region, but the Jewish leaders went to some of the important men in the town and to some respected women who were religious. They turned them against Paul and Barnabas and started making trouble for them. They even chased them out of that part of the country. Paul and Barnabas shook that dust, shook the dust from, from that place 
off their feet and went on to the city of Iconium. But the Lord's followers in Antioch were very happy and were filled with the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Ahia. God's willing tomorrow, we're still in the book of Acts, chapter 14, Paul and Barnabas in Iconium. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some. He died for us all. And if you haven't given your life to Christ Jesus, what are you waiting for? Nobody else died for our sins, and you can't be saved in any other way. It's only through Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. It's something we all must do, so please do it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, please let it go. I'm telling you to please let it go, because if you don't forgive your fellow man, your father who art in heaven is not going to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions either. And not only that, your prayers may be hindered. Well, I always tell you the truth, because I love you, and Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day, children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike. God bless you. Bye-bye.